What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So we'll be talking about Scream 6 solely in this video here again today. Kevin Williamson in an interview with Sci-Fi, more specifically the Sci-Fi Wire, sat down to talk about his upcoming movie Sick, which is debuting on Peacock later tonight. If you want to, I would advise, I would encourage you actually to stay up and watch this movie when it drops because Sick is a great movie. The best pandemic slasher era movie we've gotten thus far out of the bunch that are out there. Or just out of pandemic movies in general, to be honest. Uh, if you saw my review, you know that I really enjoyed that movie and think it's a pretty well done slasher movie set in the pandemic era. Stay up and watch that tonight when it drops on Peacock. Uh, but during this interview where he was talking about his upcoming s s movie, Sick, he got asked about Scream 6. And he has had nothing but high praises to say about this movie going over that, going over Radio Silence. Now he thinks they're the, prop they're the appropriate fit to be handling the IP now, o taking over from, of course, him and Wes Craven. He said this about Scream 6. It doesn't feel like part six. It feels like you're watching this big, huge, fresh reinvention. Um, he also stated, I love, love, love it. I've watched the movie with a big smile on my face. I think it's everything and more. And going to New York was awesome. The movie feels new. It feels fresh. It feels like a new movie. Now, of course, he just repeated some stuff there at the end. But that first little snippet obviously not too shocking to hear that the series creator who's on as an executive producer for the upcoming film loved this movie however it seems that going off of some of his the way i'm the way i'm just feeling the energy or interpreting the energy from these words he seems like he's preferring this one over screen five which to me was something i was already kind of getting a sense of just from the simple teaser when i saw that the aerial shots of the city the way everything was just setting the stage and then that brief small teaser of what we saw the cinematography looked a lot better everything just looked a lot better in terms of the uh the set's looking a lot more authentic given how everything was restricted due to the COVID protocols during the production of 5. 6 definitely looks like visually it's going to surpass 5 easily. I'll have to see if the script is actually executed in a manner that surpasses what was written in 5. But on the surface from what we saw in that teaser, those are the exact vibes I was getting that this is going to be better than Screen 5. And that's what I'm picking up or interpreting Kevin Williamson's words from this interview. He seems like he prefers Scream 6 over Scream 5. Now, he also said this about, about Radio Silence. He said, Radio Silence is amazing. They're the perfect people to take the torch. I love Scream 6. It's really good. It's great. There's no way around it. I'm very happy with how it turned out. I really do have all that enthusiasm for it. I'm really excited. You're not the only one that's excited. I'm excited now, too. Hearing these words from you and interpreting the way that I am and just deciphering how, how he must be feeling and the energy behind his words when he's saying this. I'm excited for Scream 6. I'm excited to see Ghostface take on New York. I'm excited to see Ghostface show Jason how it's done. Uh, we won't have Ghostface in like a majority of the movie set in Woodsboro and then we'll catch a boat trip over to New York at the last minute. <laughs> Ghostface is going to show Jason how it's done. So what do you guys think about what Kevin Williamson had to say in that interview? What do you think he's really overly excited about? What do you think is happening in Scream 6 that has him feeling this way? Uh, I will share my thoughts on some more of this after I read this last excerpt from this article. It says, during an interview last year, Bet Nelly Open, which you know is one of the directors, one half of Radio Silence, stated that the key was to stay true to the material while subverting audiences' expectations. It has to take risk. And I think we had a lot of fun on this one being like, how do we make sure that we have one foot firmly planted in the legacy and in the history of Scream, but then also try to take a step forward and try to play with your expectations a little bit. I will say that going off of what Kevin has stated about his thoughts on the movie, it seems like they do enough to honor and pay respect to what Scream has been, but then they shake it up enough to be their own unique movie from radio silence and this is radio silence's iteration of scream while still remaining true to what scream has been in the past but we're seeing things in a scream movie that we've never seen before which makes me excited that's what i'm hoping we get anyway we'll see, we're seeing different things that aren't playing it as safe as you could argue scream 5 played it what those could be those could be a variety of different things one the simple fact that we're in new york city <laughs> Uh, we're out of we're out of California once again. The only time we went out of California in the past, I believe, was Scream 2. All the other movies, yes, are set in California. So this is the first time since 97 we are outside of California, thank God. And 
We have a movie without Sidney Prescott, of course. That is also some opportunity. There's some opportunity there. You have an opportunity to see if you can actually tell a compelling story that's solely just tied to these characters and not use any of the past legacy characters as crutches. Not that they were used as crutches in the fifth movie, but again, you have chance to develop those characters. Chances to introduce a new audience to these characters that maybe haven't even seen any of the movies Sydney has been, been in. Maybe this is the first movie from the franchise they see, and this is what helps them become a fan of the franchise and wants them or encourages them to go watch the previous movies and see how we got up to this point. Uh, when it relates to just like shaking up and dodging expectations or subverting expectations, expectations right now, I think the biggest expectation for a lot of fans is the fact that you're going to kill off a lot of the Woodsboro survivors. So I think how you could play with our expectations is put them in these dangerous scenarios, but don't have them die there just yet. Use that mindset of the public to your advantage to help create tension, help create suspense, help create these fun chase sequences or dire situations, similar to how we've been teased that Mindy could potentially be dying on that subway during the teaser. Chances are she's not gonna die there, but then she will die later on in the movie. You can see stuff like that going on where they play with you to make you think that this character that you already are going into dreading the chance of this character dying put them in situations where you think they're about to die then they don't so you get that breath of fresh air after your blood pressure was just up your heart was racing then you get that sigh of relief when they don't die so then you get that false sense of security minutes later moments later however many scenes later that same character that you thought was going to die right then and there they get killed or better yet another way you could do it some of these people that think the character is going to die what if they survive that's the other thing that could be something that people aren't ready for or prepared for so you guys can let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below what are your thoughts on kevin williamson's comments on scream 6 and his praise of course again like i stated there's nothing shocking about this because of the fact that it's kevin williamson he's attached to the project in some capacity however I trust him in what he's saying. I trust him in what he's saying, given that I've already seen his movie Sick, and I know that he still has it. He has not lost a step, although I know he was a co-writer for Sick. I have faith that what he's saying about Scream 6 will, will end up being my sentiments when I see the movie as well. Or, of course, he could be lying. I mean, he, he lied about Stu being dead, right? That's, that's the sentiment by <laughs> some fans that he's lying about Stu Mocker being dead even though he's not i'm telling you right now he's not you guys again can let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you go ahead and subscribe turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video in the description i'll have links to my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course to let me know if there are any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video